Hello and welcome to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, women's holistic health coach and fellow recovering perfectionist. This podcast was created to show you that your body is not in the way. It is actually leading your way. Hello, this is episode number 13 of Witchy Wellness Radio, and I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani. And today we are talking to the wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful Erica Fullen of Wild Sage Collective, and we are talking all about healing rituals. And before we dive into the episode today, I wanted to take a second and see if you guys haven't already subscribed through iTunes go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and I would be so grateful to hear what you have to think about Witchy Wellness Radio and write a review through the iTunes podcast app. And lastly, my favorite platform to communicate with all of you beautiful people other than this radio show is Instagram. So head over to Instagram at Lauren Chalantani for a daily inspirational post, maybe a a journaling prompt. I love to share recipes and my stories as well as your fill of beautiful inspirational quotes. All right, let's get back to interview again with Erica Fallen, where we talk all about healing rituals. A little more about Erica is that she is an intuitive healer, meditation guide, founder of the Wild Sage Collective, and creator of the Mala Making Kit, Mod Mala. She holds a degree in psychology and has spent the last 18 years delving deep into the studies, education, and practice of the holistic arts. She has a vast knowledge, wisdom, and gifts in the areas of chakra reading and balancing, clairvoyance, energy mastery, meditation, and Reiki. In creating the Wild Sage Collective, Erica has taken these years of experience in the holistic arts and has curated a beautiful collection of chakra-inspired jewelry, meditation tools, daily rituals, and mala-making kits. A little rundown of what we cover in today's interview is how Erica's passion for these holistic arts led her to create the Wild Sage Collective and Mod Mala, the power of rituals and how to incorporate them into your daily life, and how to start and incorporate a daily meditation practice, even with kids. Erica shares a seasonal chakra meditation walk. We both talk about our own favorite morning rituals, how to trust your intuition in general, but also for finding the best morning ritual for you. Why are big wake-up calls were the greatest things that happened to both of us? How rituals can help you get through tough times, but also uncover a deep sense of gratitude. Who's really doing the healing when you're working with a guide, healer, or a coach? How to step out of being a conscious victim through using your own inner guidance system or your intuition. How Erica uses laughter to lighten her load, observe what's really going on, and how ridiculous it is just to be a human. Lastly, why energy always matches up. So without further ado, enjoy episode number 13, Healing Rituals with Erica Fullen. Hello and welcome, Erica, to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm so happy to have you on here today. And Erica is the founder of Wild Sage Collective and the Mod Mala Company, which we will be talking all about today. But welcome. I'm so excited to have you on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I know this is a long time making. I've wanted to have you on here for a while. For a while. I think we're in for a <laughs> And I've wanted today. to come on. <laughs> <laughs> so diving right in, um, kind of enlighten us, if you will, of how you came to create 
the Wild Sage Collective and Mon Mala kind of in tandem with all of that? Yeah, um, it's been quite a journey, right? As, as all these things always are. Um, but really starting out, um, I've always been into kind of all things, all things woo-woo, <laughs> for lack of better words, um, since I was a teenager. Um, I remember it being 16 and like, I would always end up in a bookstore, right? And kind of walking around and being drawn to what, but at that time was called like, I think it was called like the occult section, which I think has since been changed, which is lovely because that was a horrible name. Um, and really drawn towards all those things. And I was introduced to the chakras at a really um, early age, which is what all of our jewelry is kind of made off of. Um, and so it kind of had this theme in and out of my life for a long time. Um, and finally in my early twenties became a, uh, Reiki instructor or, or I'm sorry, Reiki, um, practitioner and worked at a spa for many years that was just surrounded by these beautiful mountains, all these amazing healers and just learned so much about all of the energy centers and really saw some amazing shifts with people, um, in helping to balance those energy centers. So fast forward a bunch of years and, you know, three kids, three dogs, a husband later, um, I was really looking to dive back into all of those practices. And I randomly took a jewelry making class and really started getting into stones. Um, and seeing all of those connections, I started noticing the connections with, you know, stones and chakras. And, you know, this was, um, earlier on in internet time. So it wasn't my first intention to like, Hey, I should Google that. Cause I bet there's a connection. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, finally I did go and look some things up and I was like, Oh, duh. I'm not the first one to figure out that there's a connection between these stones and chakras. Um, so from there I started making jewelry based on, um, the seven major chakras and it began with, um, I was offering um, Reiki and chakra balancing and meditation uh, to my clients. And then at the end would create this custom piece of jewelry for them um, using stones to help balance whatever chakras were out of line for them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the jewelry started um and then just expanded from there you know really wanting to make it a little bit more accessible to people than just the people that i saw in the office um so starting to build collections off of them and kind of from there uh i met a woman that was doing a bunch of yoga retreats really around the world um you know georgia we did italy we did saint croix and i would travel with her as a guest healer and offer these services to our clients making custom jewelry. And she came up to me one day and said, you know, can you teach, um, do you know how to make malas? And I was like, yeah, I know how to make malas. And she's like, great. I want you to teach a mala making class on my next retreat. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> hold on. I got to figure out how to, <laughs> how to do that in a class setting. And like, I'm not a teacher. Like, I'm a one-on-one -on -one person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> um, but I did it. And the first class, I think the first class I taught had like 45 people in it, right? And I was like, what? Okay. Um, and I taught them how to make malas. And from there, I just started making these little kits, right? That people, that we could use on these um, yoga retreats. And I'll never forget, I was sitting on a beach teaching a mala making class in St. Croix. And one of the uh, students came up to me and said, you know, you need to put you and this in a box. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. It's got to be a really <laughs> cool box, though. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> right? It ended up being a really cool box. Um, so it took about let's see, it took about like a year and a half to really develop the product. Um, again, I'm a, I'm a healer, right? What do I know about developing a product and marketing a product and all of that? Um, <laughs> but I figured it out. And we launched in 2016 officially as the Wild Sage Collective offering 
chakra inspired jewelry, Mod Mala, which is our mala making kit that came out of those retreats. Um, and then we also offer daily rituals and different life experiences. So daily rituals like um, Oracle cards, uh, you know, Sage, Palo Santo, journals. Um, and then we offer life experiences to go with that. So um, I'll teach new moon circles um, at our studio once a month, obviously. And uh, we also do this thing called psychic circles with another woman that comes in. We offer tarot readings. So all sorts of fun stuff, woo-woo, right? Going on at the Wild Sage Collective beyond just the beautiful jewelry and all making kits. So yeah, that's kind of how it all came about. <laughs> that's awesome. I always love hearing how people, it just naturally f- flowed in. Like, like Absolutely. you said, I, I'm just a healer. What am I, how do I figure this out? I mean, it's a matter of experience. <laughs> And being an entrepreneur, especially in this woo or like wellness, spirituality aspect is like, you got a lot of growth to do. You got a lot of learning, but um, it just, when you keep diving into things that interest you and things that light you up, it just kind of amazes me how it all just comes together in a way you never would have expected. Never would have expected. (laughs) Never. (laughs) Right. I mean, and all those things that come along with being an entrepreneur, right? So Mm -hmm. hiring an employee is building a website, um, which I knew nothing about. That was a lovely learning curve, but we ended up with this beautiful website, um, with finding space, you know, um, and then trying to keep everything in balance, right? So being an entrepreneur, um, having my own spiritual practice, and of course my family, and my friends and keeping all those things in balance and still being able to offer these beautiful items and services to people. So that's always a struggle. (laughs) Yes. Which is a perfect segue into talking about the power and importance of rituals. (laughs) Yes. Because I feel you on that one. You have to center and prioritize, you know, day to day, long-term, short-term, moment to moment. Because, you know, you got a lot going on, but you need to make sure you're grounded and aligned and, and focused. Because if, you, if you're, you know, freaking out as a mom, entrepreneur, or even for yourself, it's like everything else is going to suffer. So I love the power of rituals. I love using my mod malas all the time. <laughs> That's part of my rituals. Yeah. To center myself. and you know, it's like a, I call it a date with the divine is really what it is. That's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit on how, I guess, Mad Mala, but other services you guys offer, because I know like you said, it's more than just chakra related jewelry and Mad Malas, you know, it's really the experience of it all. And I think we all know, okay, maybe I should have some type of morning routine. Where do I start? What does it need to look like? Do I need to go do a yoga class and meditate for three hours. It does not need to be that complicated. (laughs) No. No. But would you love to kind of touch on the topic of rituals and how you incorporate it into your own life as well? Absolutely. Um, So, yeah, I mean, going back to your point, um, it's so important to incorporate these practices, however it fits into your life, right? So, yeah, a three-hour meditation would be amazing daily. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) But that shit is not real. (laughs) Mm -mm. (laughs) My meditation sometimes, you'll love this, sometimes is me closing myself in the bathroom and acting like I'm going to the bathroom so my kids won't come and knock (laughs) on the door. (laughs) And usually they do anyways. I finally got them to stop opening it right away. Like, at least they'll knock um but (laughs) yeah so sometimes that's just like how we roll um but no I mean I try very hard um one thing that keeps me absolutely balanced so that I can create these spaces I can create these you know 
beautiful kind of healing pieces for people is that I have to stay balanced, right? And I have to stay centered or else what I'm offering people is crap if I'm not doing it myself. Um, so for me, there's a little bit of responsibility there, right? Like if I'm going to be this light for people, um, I need to make sure I'm taking care of my shit. (laughs) So, you know, one thing for me is just having that daily meditation practice, whatever it looks like that day. Um, I do try and get up at five 30 every morning, um, before the kids get up so I can actually get like a real meditation in, but you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. And sometimes. And I am left to do the the bathroom meditation, which is fine and it works. Um, But that is one of my main rituals, right? So I've pretty much ritualized my meditation and what that looks like um, so that it's almost like brushing my teeth in the morning. It's also my meditation, right? So I get up, I do my meditation, and then I go about my day. So it's the first thing I do to ground, center, really set my intentions for the day. Like, what do I want to bring in? You know, what do I have on the schedule? What do I want to bring in? What do I want to surround myself with? And then also during that same time, making sure that I'm releasing out what is no longer serving me so I can begin that day at my best. And um, most days it works. You know, some days I still scream at my kids in the morning. (laughs) I'm like, I think I need another meditation. Um, but it all works out. And um, so that's just one of my most powerful rituals is meditation. And of course, incorporating for me using stones during my meditation. So um, using different stones, like for example, if my throat chakra I find is more closed, I'll usually be wearing some of our lapis jewelry or holding a lapis stone or sometimes both. Like I think if I could like just put myself in a lapis bath sometimes I would do it um (laughs) that sounds amazing (laughs) right (laughs) have you seen those big like bathtubs like they'll make bathtubs out of different gemstones which I can't even imagine how much that would be but um I would totally be that person that has that in my house if I could oh me too Uh, I'm right (laughs) (laughs) right um So, yeah, so using those during that meditation practice, of course, usually using my mala, my mod mala that I created with specific intentions and doing a mala meditation, um, whatever I really need that morning, but that time is set, that time is ritualized, right? That I have this amount of time in the morning to start my day this way. Um, So for me, that's just a really important ritual. Um, At Wild Sage, we offer... Um, like I was saying, different rituals that you can put in, right? So like sage, so we'll sell sage smudge sticks or Palo Santo um, and showing people just how to make that a ritual, right? How to cleanse out your house, clear that space um, and balance kind of those energies in their home or maybe an object or a stone or maybe a person. Maybe you need to like sage the shit out of your husband because he's driving you nuts, you know? We can- <laughs> Sounds like a voice of experience here. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we can make that a ritual too, right? Um, With these different things. Also, you know, the journals that we sell that have different um, prompts in them. And making, maybe that's your ritual, right? Maybe you enjoy writing and, um, you know, writing all those things down uh, and making that your morning practice. Maybe journaling your dreams is your ritual. Um, or some, for some people walking, God, oh, one of my favorite walks to do during this time of year, fall and spring is like the best time to do it. And it's this chakra meditation walk. It's super, super simple, but because there's so many beautiful colors out right now in the fall, right? Mm -hmm. Especially all those lower chakra colors. It's funny because in the fall, it's more lower chakra colors. And in the spring, it almost seems like it's more upper chakras, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, So, but walking around and, you know, so when you see one of those beautiful red leaves, taking that color and visualizing it going into your root chakra. And as you continue to walk, pulling those red colors from nature into your root chakra and letting it balance out. And then same thing, seeing those beautiful orange colors, pulling that into your sacral chakra and letting it balance, you know, letting nature balance that out for you with all the beautiful colors she's providing right now. 
you know, same with the yellow for your solar plexus, you know, the green for your heart, there still is plenty of green out, right? And pulling that into your heart chakra. Blue can be a little tough sometimes, but there's always the sky, right? And you can use her beauty and pull that into your throat chakra and help balance that out. Um, you know, third eye purples, which again is much easier in spring than mm-hmm. <laughs> fall. But even things like I always find, like when I get to my third eye in the fall, I'll be like, ah, oh, crap. Okay, there's nothing here. <laughs> but it's funny; it'll like something will appear, right? Even if it's like a person walks by me in like a purple sweatshirt or something like that. It's you know, even if it's not something necessarily in nature, it's like all of a sudden that purple will appear for me, you know, and then that either a lighter purple or um, even like a white I'll use for crown chakra and bring that in. And it's just this beautiful meditation walk in the fall and spring. Um, and that's one of my favorite rituals during those times um, is to go out and do that walk. And it's, it's pretty beautiful. So, Yeah. Do you have any favorite rituals? Oh, that sounds lovely. I'm going to start doing that one this week. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, man, it changes every day, to be honest. Um, and I think that's okay. I think it doesn't have to be the same thing every day. Because mm. I've been there where, you know, I go to, I, I, last winter I was on a yoga train every single morning. Or recently it was meditation. But now... I wake up and just kind of ask and listen. And sometimes it's writing. Mm -hmm. I love to write. And, you know, sometimes it's processing. Sometimes it's my dream. Sometimes it's just reframing. And I like to write out almost like my own therapy session of like coaching myself through something. You know, really being aware of how I'm thinking about a situation or an emotion and just as like meditation, it kind of helps you become more of a observer or more aware of what you're actually thinking and how positive or possibly negative yeah. <laughs> you're thinking about these situations. <laughs> you're like, did I really just say that? <laughs> and so it's just, you know, gaining that awareness. And yeah. for me, whatever the ritual is, it can just be... Last week, I really just didn't want to do anything. So I got up, I made some tea, sat back down in the dark, Mm -hmm. lit a few candles and just sat there. And just soaking in that stillness and that that quietness. And, you know, I don't have any kids. It's just me right now. But I still wake up about 5.15 or 5.30 because there's something so magical. There's a stillness in the air you know, at that time before dawn where everything just seems quiet and it almost enables you to be able to listen more, you know, things, you, that quiet voice inside of you, that intuition that maybe you've been, it's not suppressing, but other things that throughout the day are a little bit louder. You're able to kind of bring her in. And more importantly, I find that, you know, any type of ritual in the morning just enables us to get out of the way. Like what you were saying with the chakra um, walking meditation is you're, you're not doing that work. You're, you're soaking in the beauty of mother nature and the things around you to help balance and clear and, and grow those energies, but you're just stepping out of the way. You know, that ego part of you who thinks that you're really doing all this healing. I know as a healer, you could probably speak to that. Like, you know, you're not the one doing the healing. There's something else coming through you. (laughs) Yeah. And I think it's the same for rituals. And starting our day is getting out of the way and letting the divine speak through you. And even during our waking hours with other people, interacting with other people, um, I listened to the Sean Korn, a uh, yogi, a big, pretty big yogi person for all my yogis out there, um, podcast. And there was this beautiful quote that she said, it was, see the soul, not the story. Ooh, and that yeah. is just like, 
Oh, I know. I have just that is have beautiful. <laughs> stayed with me for like two weeks now. And it all just kind of flows back to getting out of the way and realizing that's what everybody else is trying to do. You know, we're all stuck in our own stories. And to see compassion in a, for other people without being triggered because you just, you need to get out of the way and see their soul and also see your soul. And I think that's what the power of rituals, especially first thing, or even throughout the day, whenever you can has the power to do is you're able to see your own soul and let go of that story or stories you've been telling yourself. Yeah, absolutely. There was, since we're on quotes, I just posted this quote the other day from Wayne Dyer, who said, see the light in others and treat them as, I believe it says, treat them as if it's all you see, right? Ooh, yes. Same thing though, right? Yeah. Just getting out of the way, just in taking, you know, all those, what you think you see and just see the light in them, right? And then it's almost like, once you see that light in yourself, once you see that light in others and treat them as the light, I mean just magic starts to unfold um you know similar to that sean corn quote you know there's just some some beauty in that like you were saying of just getting out of your own way and i think like you were saying rituals just have a great way of doing that um and also you know like you were saying with the tea and sitting in the dark and lighting a few candles um trusting your intuition for whatever ritual you you need at that moment right and I agree with you about the the morning there is something magical about that it's almost like you're still in, be, in that in-between state right you just woke up you were just you know possibly you know in another dimension right having some fun times on the astral in your dreams mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> maybe you know doing whatever you do on on the astral plane Right. And then coming back to, and then it's almost like you still have one foot in each world, you know, um, at that time in the morning and trusting your intuition at that time to build those rituals and, and do what's needed to do so that you can come forward as your best self for that day. Um, and that changes every day, right. Um, you know, whether it's the journaling meditation, the walk, um, maybe it's taking a bath, right? Baths are super amazing rituals. <laughs> uh, or tea is always great. So yeah. Yeah, I'm a bath girl. I'm always in there. Right. It just, uh, on so many levels, <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it I mean, it helps. I, if I am going through a hard time, I mean, I should go anyway, but normally I'm drawn to the bath. You know, if I'm really processing something um, emotionally or something's going on externally, first thing in the morning, it's like, it's like coming back. Yeah, back like to that. Submerged. Yeah. Are submerged. you a water sign too? No, I'm a fire sign. I'm a sad. <laughs> See, maybe you need to put that fire out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's calm this down. Because sometimes when I am going through, you know, when everything's hitting the fan, it's like I just wake up with this, you know, the anxiety, the heart racing like it just slaps me in the face before I even can sit down to meditate or you know roll out of my bed and I think that's important to let people know like even though you you practice these rituals or you're a devout yogi or whatever you know things are still going to happen emotionally you're still going to get triggered and it's like the more you do this work and the more you show up sometimes it feels like the bigger those things get (laughs) Because it's just a layer, you know, we're just a big onion. And you think that you solve this issue. You think that you heal, that you let go of everything. Mm -hmm. And then when you least expect it, it comes back up. But I think it's so beautiful that we can use these rituals and this time and the space to honor that and to transmute it into something positive well, and, because, just recognizing and it. recognizing it yes you know, and just, yeah just recognizing yeah. that that's what it was and that hey you know I, I thought I already dealt with this <laughs> but it probably comes back when it comes back up again it's not as bad right so yeah. I remember 
you know, before I did, before I took like a deep dive into all of this, you know, kind of the, you know, the divine goddess universe, whatever you want to call it, gives you all these like little nudges, right? Like, hey, you should pay attention to this. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you tuck it away, you know, and you like another <laughs> oh, <yeah>. little, <laughs> right? And Spiritual get, bypassing is what I like to call there it. There you go. Yes. <laughs> That's a great term. <laughs> so right then they nudge you again and you do like another like not so elegant spiritual bypass of like yeah 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 you know I'll deal with that later and it's like the divine will only give you so many of those before you get the big like kick in the ass right of like something not traumatic but something big happens in your life that forces you to deal with that you know and forces you to deal with that layer that you were getting those nudges about and you ignored, you know? And I find that the more I do this work, not that things don't happen, but they're not as traumatic, you know? It's not like, um, you know, if it comes back up, it's, it's usually that first nudge. I'm like, yep, yep, hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Let's work on this now. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> so I always find that super interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I, I got into, I, I truly believe that, you know, all, everything up to this point has happened for a reason to get us here today mm-hmm. talking, you know, this conversation. And I know myself included, when you start getting into this work, a lot of like law of attraction stuff too, is sometimes we feel we can get down this rabbit hole with that topic. like oh, I kept ignoring and I kept suppressing and like, so I manifested this bigger and worse problem, you know, this wake up call. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to challenge that to say, no, I think to think that you have that much control, I think, I think that's the ego trying to actually think that we have control. (laughs) Because I find, you know, the divine lives in the unknown and Mm -hmm. it's going to happen in a way that you least expect. And I think that we, I know I needed that big of a wake up call to get my shit together. Yeah, me too. When they've come, I'm like, yeah, it wouldn't have happened any other way. So exactly. And and, and when you know, you really, I don't want to say healed, but when you know, you've gotten to a good place is when those big wake up calls, whether it's a relationship, a career, health issue, whatever, where you can truly be thankful for all of it Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know say like that was the best thing that ever happened to me and you know I'm gonna go on air and say that you know I don't really talk publicly about this but my marriage that had ended I honestly honest to God it was the best thing that could ever have happened to me because I know who I truly am now and I wouldn't have stepped into any of that unless I had to go through that fire and yeah. yeah so anybody out there, it's feels like you're walking through that fire. Like, yes, we have to feel all those ranges of emotions, the good and the bad and the ugly, but know that if you were in the thick of it, it's a divine blessing because that means it's waking you up when anything like these survival emotions get triggered. Yeah. I get excited. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Yes, bring it on. Like, because I know the other side of it, it's like it's going to be bigger and better than I can ever imagine. Absolutely. It is tough when it's when you're in it, though. Let me oh, tell yeah. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in that arena and you're, you know, you know, fighting it out, it, it's tough to see the, you know, the light at the end, but you're right. You know, the, the, what you learn from it and the grace and um being able to be thankful for that experience right and um you know I don't share this a lot either but you know my um experience with domestic violence right and that's some things that you're in and you're like I how am I going to get out of this and why am I here to me you know and trying to get out of that right but I am so thankful for that experience and I can honestly like think of the person that did this to me and really be grateful for them which was 
a long, long, <laughs> long <laughs> journey to get to. Uh-huh. But, but I needed it. And I needed, oh, that sounded horrible. <laughs> I did not need it. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, I know what you mean. It was a, it was a spiritual awakening is what I like to say. 100%, right? And, you know, again, and I think, when you're in that arena and, um, you know, you're battling kind of those things that you can't see where it's all coming from. But as we do this practice more and more and, you know, um, you can kind of get through those struggles and see that they, they were needed. They were a blessing and to be thankful for them, um, as you, as you work through them. Right. Um, but it's a struggle when you're in them, girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I agree. Um, and I think, you know, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel in those situations. But you, I think it's an Albert Einstein quote, is you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. Ooh. So, yeah. So I like to think, you know, doing things like these rituals every day or just doing something that intuitively feels good, that brings you joy, that, you know, so to go from like despair and victimhood all the way up to pure ecstatic bliss is kind of a big leap. And I don't, you know, I would love to say that I could just jump there, but I can't. So (laughs) I think it's really important to like, you know, slowly you can walk your way up that ladder of like the emotional scale. And yeah. And take your time with it and yeah. see what happens at each rung of that ladder. Right. Because each rung of that ladder going up that, that scale is, um, is just is important. Right. And take your time there and learn the lessons there and then move up. Right. It's not a race. This is a journey for all of us. Um, and you know, just, kind of cliche at this point but enjoy that journey and enjoy all that comes with it right and enjoy all those steps up the ladder um and really you know see the beauty in all of that and all of those learnings um yeah it took me years years and years to get to this point you know and to be able to be thankful for those situations you know and um the rituals have helped me immensely you know, in seeing the connections and in healing them. And, you know, for me also seeing the ancestral lineage that got me to that point as well, right? I was not the first person in my family um, to deal with domestic violence. You know, my mother did, my grandmother did, um, her mother before her. So you have all these, you know, (laughs) generations of this happening. So not only healing myself, but healing that ancestral line, that male and female ancestral line, they're both as important. Um, so doing a lot of that work through it as well. But again, that did not, you know, happen for, for I think 10 years <laughs> it took. Um, and it just doing the work and doing those daily rituals, whatever works for you and um, how, however um, you see it. And finding that way, right? Finding your medicine um, for those situations because it's different for all of us. What works for me isn't going to work for everybody else. I wish it did because then I'd be like, okay, step one, do this. Yes. <laughs> step I two, think... here you go, you know? But it's different for everyone. Yeah, it reminds me of like some Pinterest infographic. <laughs> Five <one>. ways, yeah. <laughs> so whatever. Heal ancestral lines. Yeah. <laughs> This is what you do, you know, step two. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't work that way, right? right? And I think that made me think of, so like this process can get scary and feel like you're alone. And for me, part of my healing journey was to kind of take full responsibility and listen to my own intuition of, you know, how to incorporate these rituals or healing practices. I had I was at a point where I was going to every single healer, every single therapist, every yeah. single coach with good intentions, but 
really the core desire of it was please just tell me what to do and I'll do it. (laughs) Like you said, like, give me the plan. Tell me what to do. I'll do it. Like completely disconnecting from my own, like sovereign being or like my own intuition. But I do, I still feel, I love to go, you know, work with different healers or mediums or therapists to this day, because I think there is a lot of wisdom and support and love and guidance that can come through working with these people. You have a wealth of knowledge about yourself and your body and how it feels. And when I, I, this comes to mind, like when I go to a doctor, you know, they have a, a body of knowledge. They're an expert at this and they might have some good things to say to you or guidance or tips, but you're the one who knows what feels good in your body. Absolutely. Amen, sister. Amen. (laughs) Do you you have any, like, I mean, I know you do a lot of healing work. Do you just kind of want to, like, talk about that and how you can incorporate that into your own healing or ritual practices? Uh, Absolutely. So, I mean, yes, you are your own best healer, right? And my job, my goal as a healer is to, yes, share some wisdom with you, but really teach you to tap into yourself and tap into that wisdom within. And we talk a lot about Wild Sage about just bringing people back to their source, right? And like, that is our main mission, our main guidance, or, you know, um, kind of (laughs) bringing people back to their source by any means necessary, right? (laughs) So, you know, if doing a healing session with me or healing work with me or doing a meditation circle, the idea being that I will give you some tools, but it's up to you because you are your best healer and I am there to hold your hand, but the work is to be done by you in order to grow, you know, and same with the jewelry and the model making kits, right? These are tools for you. And so if you're not comfortable yet, you know, coming to me as a healer and having a session, you know, just wearing the stones, right? And wearing the stones with attention. Like I'm putting this bracelet on because I'm working on, you know, my heart chakra and releasing anxiety. So every time you look at it, it's this reminder of what it is that you're working on. Same thing with the mala making kids, right? Building this mala with what you want to bring in. And having it be this ritual practice of creating this mala, filling it with your love, your intention, um, your healing. Um, And then, of course, you know, my hope is always that you're meditating with it. But even if you're just wearing it as a necklace, as a reminder of that self-love, a reminder of that healing work that you are doing yourself beautifully, you know, you are all doing a beautiful job, by the way. (laughs) and um you know making it all work for you but you are your best healer you do know best whether you think you don't or not um and coming to people like myself or uh, um you know any other of the amazing healers out there um we're just guides right we're just here to guide you along your way we I call myself a healer, but I struggled with that for a long time because I'm not really doing the healing, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) I can help, I can assist, I can guide, but you're doing that yourself, you know, I'm just guiding you. Yeah, I think that's important to realize is take that divine responsibility Um, because you can be into all this stuff and still play the conscious victim card. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, which, you know, it's hard, it it can be difficult to get out of that, but realize that, yeah, you can find out the origins of why this happened or why you are this way and just shovel the blame and shame around, but stepping out of that and and having people like Erica and different other guides or coaches to help, help hold the space for you to be able to see or hear your own intuition, your own power, your own guidance Mm -hmm. to step out of it. Because, you know, we're, we're all here in this lifetime 
to grow. And I truly believe we pick these situations, these families, these social, social economic backgrounds, these bodies, these situations that put us in this experience that the last time we couldn't quite get it. It puts us in a similar situation where this time, you know, maybe our soul will wake up. Maybe we'll, we'll listen and we'll take a different direction and we'll walk closer to love or walk closer to source. Like what you were saying back to your source. Mm. And, you know, it's a never ending growth. There's always going to be new things, but just continually focusing on stepping into love and what feels good in your body is the biggest thing. That's intuition. Number one for me, what I want is, does this feel expansive? Do I feel loving or does this feel really constrictive and restrictive and, you know, just diminishing? Mm -hmm. I think that's really an easy way to start tapping into that part of you. Like you said, you know, the expand, it's funny that you just said those two words because I was just listening to an audiobook um, on those two topics, right? And how simple that practice can be with, um, you know, looking at something and, and saying, does this expand or contract me, right? And really looking at it and really thinking about it. Like, does going to this person's house expand me? Do I feel good? Where does it contract me? You know, do I feel diminished when I leave there? Or looking at a person or a job um, and just looking at all situations and making sure that, you know, your experiences are, are more expansive than, than constrictive or con- contracting, you know? So, and it, yeah. it could not make sense. You know, a lot of times when you're trusting your intuition mm-hmm. and, you're hardly <laughs> known and you're like, Really? Are we sure? Because logically, (laughs) logically, this looks great. This all lines up, but (laughs) no sense. But yeah, yeah. And um, this just popped in my head, so I have to say it. Um, This was from a a previous episode I did. But if you've never fully experienced a hell no, you're never going (laughs) to experience a hell yes. So honoring both, like, I think it's this this dance where you can start to feel, but the power of no, you know, wherever, however that looks in your life and honoring that, even though like stepping outside of the shoulds, and I like to say, don't should all over yourself. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like I should be better mom or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All over yourself. That is amazing. Yes. (laughs) absolutely right and choice like right there's this we have choices we we can choose to do one way or the other right we can choose to have these experiences and you know should have would have could have you know of of how things should be just you know almost need not to need not apply <laughs> mm-hmm. on getting out of that mind frame and getting into the more conscious decision and choices that you can make and, and, you know, listening to that hell no, so that you can hear a hell yes. Right. But um, yeah, intuition can be funny sometimes, right. When you get those like nudges or messages or that intuitive hit, right. When you're like, really, is that, are you sure? (laughs) Are you sure this is going to go? Okay. Cause (laughs) This doesn't make no sense whatsoever. But, mm-hmm. but yeah. And, you know, sometimes you follow it, sometimes you don't, but sometimes you follow it and you're like, wow, never in a million years did I think it was going to turn out this way or work out, you know? And um, so there's a lot of trust, right? There's a lot of trust in this work. There's a lot of trust. There's a lot of surrender, um, surrendering to the divine. Um, trusting those intuitions and those divine messages um, and and being able to weed through those yeses and nos, right? Yes, and I think that's something that oh, I, I'm, I'm covering different layers on of surrendering and letting go. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people struggle with that. Like when 
I talk to health coaching clients about, you know, letting go and relaxing a little bit. It's like, what do you mean I have to let go? (laughs) I have to control every single thing down to the minute. You know, it's all on my Google calendar, my list, (laughs) which I'm the same way. So I'm not bashing anybody, (laughs) but letting go of that control. And, you know, I, it sounds counterintuitive, but I find solace in realizing we really don't have control. No. How do you deal with the, because it's a big thing of surrendering and letting go and yeah, it's, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's still definitely a struggle. Um, you know, some of the things that I do a lot of times when I find myself being very controlling or um, resistant is just acknowledging it and simply just acknowledging it to myself of, wow, I have a lot of resistance right now. What is that all about? And getting curious about it and kind of uncovering those layers, right? And um, for me, sometimes bringing in humor. I'm I'm sure you've never noticed. I love to laugh a lot, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm, Which is what I love about you. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes at really inappropriate times too. But uh, (laughs) but I, I think humor brings such an important aspect to all of this too with surrender with trust with all of that and having some humor with yourself um and bringing in some joy into it right because we can be like super serious yogi meditators right but that's not the real purpose of it the purpose of it is to learn and love and have joy um so with that surrender with that trust is is having some joy with it and maybe having a good chuckle at yourself you know when you get to that moment and you're stuck and you're um, feeling like you need to surrender more or you're controlling items and, and get curious about it. Why am I controlling this? What's the under, what's the underneath of it? Right. You know, and it'll unfold. It'll easily unfold for you once you get curious enough about it. And then, you know, when you see it, you know, once you see it, you can shift. I'm reading this great book called Soul Shifts. I wish I could remember who it was by, but, um, and she talks about that a lot, right? Once you can see it, you can shift it. And, you know, sometimes I like to add one more thing on there, you know, once you see it, have a good laugh at it. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. have, a, have a good laugh at your ridiculousness. You know, that's what makes you human. That's why we're here. We're here to learn all of this. We're here to make mistakes. We're here to grow, you know, um, and just have some joy with it too. Yeah. I, I like what you were saying. It does, you know, we both love all these topics and I think we're, we're lighthearted, but sometimes you can just dive into these topics and it's very serious and, mm-hmm. you know, doing the deep work, but at the end of the day, we're here for joy and to laugh and to love. And this is what I love to, to help people with intuitive eating is if you want to eat that cupcake, go ahead and eat that cupcake, but you are going to be so ridiculous about it. You are going, you know what I mean? Like you were just going to say, I am the best cupcake eater in the world. And you're just going to like make all these like completely noises. own it. And own it because you start seeing how ridiculous it is. Yeah. And it's not that big of a deal. And maybe you eat the whole cupcakes, whatever, or maybe you only have a bite and you realize yeah. I don't really want this, but be like, I'm not a ridiculous cupcake eater. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it uses the humor to like step you outside the situation. Yeah. Just yeah. like how many, <laughs> I know it's good. I still do every time I eat chocolate. Like every time I eat before. a cupcake. I'm going to be like, I'm a ridiculous cupcake eater. I can't wait. And I'm just going to be laughing and someone's going to look at me like I'm nuts, but it's going to be great. Yeah. It's, it's going to make the experience so much more, more beautiful and just brighter. <laughs> I'll let you, yeah. The flavors are just going to like pop out of your mouth now. Right. <laughs> but using humor, I love what you bring this topic up because using humor is stepping yourself outside the situation. And that's mm-hmm. how you would do with any other ritual, yoga or meditation practice is it shows you 
how to be to observe the situation or the moment at hand rather than being immersed in those emotions so you can step outside and see maybe how ridiculous it really is Mm -hmm. through humor and you know i that that can be considered a a ritual itself you know taking everything a little bit more lightheartedly and just laugh at (laughs) laugh at the heart yeah and taking a moment to you know step back and see the full picture and then see you know and then have a good laugh at the full picture you know even if it's if it's a little sad you know um there's always some joy in it too right those silver linings always can pop out and having a smile or a good chuckle is is like amazing medicine on a healing path you know um i always say too like <laughs> I don't know. Belly laughs with friends, right? Is like the best medicine. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where you can't breathe. <laughs> you're laughing so hard and you're like right? gasping and gasping. Your stomach hurts. So oh, like, it's the best ab workout too. <laughs> I was going to say, right? And then I just consider it my ab workout for the day. I'm like, yep, done. done. That was great. <laughs> uh, I, I reminded me of my um, yoga teacher training we did this really cool exercise. It's called laughter yoga, where it was beautiful. We all sat in this big circle so we could see each other. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't say anything. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you you, you couldn't really gesture, but someone would just start laughing. And oh my gosh, I just let myself go. But it was really, uh, it was fun to see how it would come around the circle in waves. And it's contagious. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting how different laughs change how your own laugh changes and just like that exchange of energy and seeing how it can transform people you know it's kind of awkward you're sitting in a circle just looking at people laughing I can see where you can feel a little uncomfortable (laughs) um but seeing how your laughter and your joy you can stay at that state of unconditional joy and happiness yeah cracking your ass off that's what I was just I was crying oh gosh it was so much fun but able to hold and maintain that level of vibration and it was almost like reaching your hand out to that person and say come with me but you're not lowering yourself down to oh my god what am I doing um I can't control myself right now I look like an idiot I'm crying like no I'm not lowering myself. And that's a lesson that I've I've had to work through. I'm sure a lot of people working through is being there for somebody without lowering yourself down to that vibrational level, Mm -hmm. maintaining it up at a higher state with compassion and with love. But it was so interesting how laughter was so contagious and um, healing. A lot of times the, the, um, the person at the retreat center, she, she led it for us. And she says, a lot of times you can process things in different ways. Your body can purge physically, you know, if you're sick or digestively. But it also can let go a lot of stuff. I think she was talking about anger specifically through using the practice of yoga laughter. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was awesome. So you're on to something, Erica. <laughs> you're, you know, you're... you're <laughs> I'm onto something with my awkward laughing. <laughs> you were just releasing and releasing all day long. I love it. <laughs> right? I mean, it, you know, some people's reactions, sometimes I have to, you know, I forget. And then, you know, reel it back in being like, that was an appropriate, inappropriate laughter for them. I mean, it was good for me. I feel great, but... <laughs> I feel like I need to explain myself to people, you know, but um, it all, it all ends up working out. But Mm -hmm. yeah, my teacher would always say to me, you know, um, energy matches up, which I love. So she's like, if you're full of love and light and laughter, kind of what you were saying, instead of, you know, shifting that energy, that vibration down to match someone is staying where you are and holding that space where you are because whoever's around you is going to naturally match up to you. So I always thought that was a beautiful way to look at it. And that was really eye opening for me when she told me that and, you know, and then would tell me that like every day, but, um, 
<laughs> this is definitely ingrained in my head, you know, uh-huh. energy matches up, energy matches up. Um, but it's a great practice, right? Be the light, be the light and let everyone around you come to that lighthouse, right? And be that beacon. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, that's what I'm here to do. You know, am I always going to be the shining bright star? Hell no. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. but at those points, I'm going to look for somebody else who is <laughs> and match up to them, you know, yeah. but, you know, I mean, for me, I think at the end of the day, again, with my mission with Wild Sage and, you know, just connecting people back to source by being a light and by being a place that people can come to, you know, whether that's just our online store, but I think you can still kind of get the vibe from the online store. At least I hope so. That's what I was trying to do, you know. Um, or coming into our store, you know, our tiny little storefront, but there's so much love and laughter in that space. Um, or, you know, to the any of the events that we collaborate on too. And, um, you know, whether you, you're just like, listen, I'm just here for that sage stick or for that pretty piece of jewelry. I don't believe in any of this. <laughs> you know, I just want the pretty bracelet. All right, cool. I am totally cool with that. You know, again, going back to the mission of connecting people to source by whatever means necessary. If you just like the pretty jewelry, that's going to remind you to be less anxious. I am 100% cool with that, you know, but if you want to go deeper, I'm here. There's a whole collective of people that we know and collaborate with that can help you go deeper. And uh, yeah, wherever you're at, we'll meet you there. Mm, That's beautiful. I think this is a wonderful way to wrap this up. I have this for myself to remind myself of being that beacon of light or with a lot of the spiritual people probably listening, a light worker Mm -hmm. is I found this beautiful light worker mantra. And I think it applies to anybody who wants to, you know, show up in their life and is doing this work to better themselves, but realize that every time you do that, you're, raising the consciousness and the vibration of the entire planet of everybody. And I just wanted to kind of read this little mantra that it's so inspiring and I hope it inspires everybody else, but here it is. It says, I am a light worker. I awoke so that others may awaken. I learned so that others may also learn. I transform so that others may transform. I lighten my load so that others may change theirs. I learn to see so that others may also see. I forgave myself so that I may help others to forgive. And I love myself so that I can bring out the love in others. So lovely. That That gets me out of bed in the morning. I'll tell you that much. (laughs) Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. Um, Yeah, I mean, that says it all, right? Yeah. (laughs) Wraps it up. And we're done. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) nothing to be said after that, you know? Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Um, So, with that all, thank you so much for being on. Is there anything? that our listeners can do to be of service for you? How can we reach you? All of that lovely jazz. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again so much for having me on. Um, this was so much fun. <laughs> oh, I know. To, I, wow. We could talk for hours. I know we do. I was like, <laughs> I, know, I, I know. it. <laughs> absolutely. But yes, um, we can be found online at the wild sage collective.com. Don't forget the, 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 like <laughs> at the, the beginning. Ohio State, yes, exactly. Ohio totally. State. Right. Yes. <laughs> like the Ohio state, the wild sage collective.com. <laughs> um, and you know, you can always reach out to us there or you can stop by our shop in Columbus. We are at 2121 Riverside drive um, in upper Arlington. Oh yeah. Awesome. Like, to see you. Yeah. <laughs> and you can order all the jewelry, all the mud malls, all that kind of stuff through your website if you're not local, right? Absolutely. So okay. all of the jewelry is on there. You can shop by chakra, you can shop by intention. 
Um, all of the mala making kits, the mod malas are on our website along with the daily rituals. We also offer the mod mala kits for wholesale. So if any of you want to lead your own mala making workshop, we do offer those um, at wholesale pricing for people that um, want to do that. And we have a little training available too. So, you know, you're a yoga instructor or a meditation teacher or a life coach or Maybe you just want to gather, you know, 12 of your friends and lead this um, intentional gathering, creating malas. Um, just let us know. We'll train you how to do it if you need the training or you can just do it by yourself. And we can, you know, sell you a package of mala making kits. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I highly like recommend it. I love, <laughs> I, lo I have so many mod malas because I love that aspect of community and gathering together and yeah. experiencing that with others is, is a beautiful experience. So I highly recommend it. And something about putting women in circle together, right? Mm -hmm. And creating. So creating mod malas, right, is almost kind of like weaving. So, you know, weaving, grabbing like a whole bunch of your sisters sitting in a circle and weaving and telling stories. And it's just this beautiful, beautiful practice um, you end up with this beautiful mala that you can meditate with that's not only filled with your own love, but that love and support of your sisters around you. So, yeah. <laughs> mm, so beautiful. I love it. Thank you again, Erica, for coming on. I'm yeah. sure we will hear from you again. Maybe we'll have you on again. We'll talk all about laughter next time. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally do that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And thanks again for having me. And remember, open up, surrender, 